there my name is Marley and welcome back to my booktube channel today as you can see from the title I'm going to be doing the my ideal bookshelf tag and I was tagged by the lovely Paige over at the PM reader so I will link her channel below definitely go subscribe to her and I will link the original creator as well but basically this tag just involves a bunch of different questions asking you about some of your favorite books to figure out what your ideal bookshelf would look like so let's just hop into it the very first question is the first book you remember reading as a child there are honestly a lot of books I remember reading as a child and it is hard to pinpoint what was the very first one for example I feel like I remember reading the Franklin books which were kid books about the turtle named Franklin I feel like I remember reading Franny be Cranny there's a bird in your hair and I remember really liking that one I think because it had a main character who was a little redhead girl with frizzy hair which was literally me so love having that representation as a child for chapter books like I remember reading Charlotte's Web with I think my mom and my sister I definitely read a quite a bit as a child. So there's quite a few options for that one. As I'm not holding up any of them, I don't physically have them with me, unfortunately. So I guess they cannot be on my bookshelf, but. All right, question two, a book you received as a gift, whether for a birthday or a holiday or something like that, that you still own today. As I just said, I don't really have a lot of my older books from like when I was a kid, but one of the older books I have on my shelf that I know I got as a gift was The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, obviously the first book in the Percy Jackson series. I think this is the movie cover, although that's, it doesn't show Logan Lerman's face, but like, I think it's the movie version, but I remember getting it from the Scholastic Book Fair, which maybe only Canadian kids would remember, but my grandma, I think, would buy me a book every year from that fair, and I remember picking this one out one of the years, maybe eighth grade or something like that. I was actually looking at it, and I have this like little bookmark stuck in there which maybe i also got at the same time i don't know but that was forgotten in there and my name is also written in here but yeah so obviously this is the first book in the very famous percy jackson series i don't think i need to explain that but i'm very grateful that i got this book at that time because it became one of my favorite series and rick uncle rick became one of my favorite authors so question three what was a book that was important to you in your teen years or in high school and i did most of my reading in high school or like as a young teen one of my favorite authors to this day became very important to me during that time and that is miss cassandra claire i was trying to figure out the timing of all of her books and all of her different series i'm pretty sure the first half of the mortal instrument books were introduced to me in elementary school and then the second half of the mortal instruments books and the infernal devices which i have here were the books that were coming out when i was in high school so those two series are the ones that were really important to me during high school. I remember reading this series like trying to sneakily read it during class or like read it when I when I went out for lunch and was walking somewhere. I would be like reading it like how rude if I was with other people but like I just didn't want to stop reading these books. You know high school is not always the best time so I feel like you know maybe that's why I loved these books so much at that time because they were like a comfort to me. Then I would say the dark artifices would have been during my like university years and then the last hour series is like my after school years like my adult years it's kind of like cool to look at it like that with her different series for like the different areas of my life but yeah that is this answer okay question four what is a book that you always go back to and i have to say it would be a fangirl by rainbow rowell rowell whatever this is just like my go-to favorite book even though it's been a while since i read it and it's probably a little bit outdated like i've probably read better books since but it still would be the book i go back to just because it was one of the first books that I related to the main, where I related to the main character so much as like a little fangirl, obviously. And yeah, I haven't read it in a little while, but it's one of the only books I have reread. So that's what I have to say for this one. Obviously, most people know it's dealing with this girl, Kath, in her first year of university. And she's really struggling adjusting, especially because she is so obsessed with this fictional couple, Simon and Baz, and writing fan fiction about them. And it's very relatable to me as I was very obsessed with a certain fictional couple when I was younger and I would make fan videos about them. So 
very relatable for me. This next question I did struggle with. Question five, what is a book that brings feelings of pride? I really didn't really know what to say for this one. I decided to just go with Again But Better as it is by Christine Riccio and she is on YouTube. Her username is Poland Bananas Books and I've been watching her since I was very, very young and she was the first person that introduced me to booktube and I started watching her reviews and it really shaped my reading experience as a young kid. Like sometimes I would just like agree with things because she said it or I'd read books because she said to. In the last few years, she has published a couple of books. So I guess it brings me pride in the fact that like I've been watching her for so many years. I saw her from like a young woman into now like a published author. So I think that's pretty cool. And I guess it brings me pride even though these books do get quite a bit of hate as they do have some flaws for sure. But I guess I still feel very like proud of a booktuber that I watched for creating these books. Question six is a book that brings you feelings of wonder. There's so many for this one. Like I love so many different wonderful, fantastical books. But one of the ones that I was just like noticing on my shelf that I thought I would mention is the Wicked Lovely series by Melissa Marr. This is not the first one because I don't own it. The first one is called Wicked Lovely and it is about fairies. And it is the very first series that I read about fairies back in probably like 2008. This book came out in 2009, so yeah. I just feel like this series did give me feelings of wonder because it was my first time reading about fae and all the different fairy courts. I was kind of reminded of this experience watching actually Paige's video from the PM Reader where she read A Court of Thorns and Roses for the first time and it was her first series that was about fairies that she ever read and it reminded me of my first time reading about fairies and how it's just so kind of confusing because you always think about fairies as like these little things kind of like Tinkerbell but in actuality they're like full-sized human beings and like there's all the courts and there's all this like politics of them and all this sort of stuff and how they can't lie and they're like very trickstery stuff like that and yeah this is a series that introduced me to him i think melissa marr is canadian so maybe her books are not as like popular internationally but they are really really good so i guess if you're a fan of akatar and want more fairies i would recommend this series this is the third book and it's kind of like akatar 2 where there are different point of views that are followed in the different books number seven the book you reread the most or the book you love the most as i said i don't reread very often fangirl would probably be the one i've reread the most or like the twilight series <laughs> um, but a book that is probably my favorite on my shelf would be a good girl's guide to murder i'm just sort of like making this be my brand now of like my favorite book because i think it has to be i read it last year so i haven't reread it yet but i definitely hope to i just think it's so good it's obviously a ya mystery about this girl pip i've talked about this tons of time before but she is trying to solve this murder because she doesn't think the person who was blamed was really blamed so she's being a little teen detective and trying to figure it out and she does by the end so yeah this is one of the books i love the most and hopefully will reread soon next question number eight a book you want on your shelves forever those are my shelves over there i would love to have so many of these books on there forever obviously so i didn't really know what to pick but i ended up going with oh, this is heavy death note the complete volume of the death note manga this could also have worked for the gift question i got this from my boyfriend last year for my birthday or christmas i can't remember but i just think this is so beautiful that I want on my shelf forever. It's my first manga I've ever had and the only manga for right now. But yeah, really pretty, really big. It's special to me because Death Note is my favorite anime and again, one of the only animes I've watched. So I love just having this on my shelf even though I have not finished reading this yet. It has been fun reading it so far. This is how far I am, if you can see. Yeah, so I would love to have this on my shelf forever. Number nine, a book on your shelf you want everyone to read. So for this, I feel like it should be something that's like sort of educational in a way. And I don't really have educational books on my shelf, but this is the one that I think will teach everyone something. That is Loveless by Alice Oseman. I've mentioned this a bunch of times as it was one of my favorites from last year. The topic that it sort of teaches on is asexuality and aromanticism. Uh, which I think is like not a super common topic. It's not something that a lot of people understand. So it was really cool to read a book where the main character actually was asexual. I, it definitely helped me understand it a lot more. And so I think if I was gonna pick 
a book for someone to read it's like it's fun it's ya like it's interesting and entertaining but then it also can kind of give you a different perspective if you don't understand what it's like to be asexual so yeah it deals with georgia who is going into her first year of university she's just trying to figure out her sexuality because she's never really had crushes on people like her friends have so she's sort of experimenting and trying to figure that out and meeting more like-minded people who feel similar to her so highly recommend question 10 a book that reminds you of a specific period or moment in your life so these two books I just can really vividly remember reading in seventh grade when I went on a trip to Cuba with my family <laughs> and that is Ink Death by Cornelia Funk which is the third book in the Ink Heart trilogy and then The Host by Stephanie Meyer it wasn't actually this version of the book I brought because I had the like library copy that I had borrowed but this is the actual physical book I brought to Cuba there's probably like sand in here from reading on the beach but yeah these are the two like chunky books I decided to bring to Cuba with me to read on the beach and I just really remember that vividly more than any other reading experience for some reason for one thing i remember there being a very emotional scene in this book and like it inspiring me to want to write which i think a lot of readers have that like when you read amazing books you also want to write them but there was just a scene between two like lovers at the end that's very heartbreaking and i was like i want to write a scene that's like that impactful where like one of the people is dying <laughs> it's, i don't know i'm just a fan of like sad endings and like heartbreaking things like that if you guys don't know pretty old book it has to do with aliens taking over the world and they basically go into human bodies hence it is called the host and we're following this one particular pair where a human is kind of like fighting off the alien like she's still present in her head so alien and the host like kind of talk and then oh my gosh like how do you just survive this book anyways it doesn't matter ink death so this also had a lot of like dramatic things happening as this is the finale to a series probably death in here as well i can't even fully remember it is called ink death so yeah probably but yeah this is like definitely more like high fantasy like it's one of those fantasies where you go into this whole other world it's actually super interesting in the first book you're following these people who when they read out loud things come out of the book and then also things go in that's like their power in this book they are in the book and things go on so that's the end of the tag thank you Paige for tagging me I don't really know of anyone to tag right now but if you're watching and you want to do it then I tag you thank you guys for watching leave me a comment if you want like and subscribe of course follow me on goodreads tiktok instagram and I'll see you in my next video on Tuesday or Thursday when I upload bye